Somerville Media Center viewers. Welcome to Here and Now with Tina Cabral. I'm here this afternoon at the Somerville Homeless Coalition on a very, very chilly January Friday. But um, Hannah, who is the Emergency Services Manager, is here to talk to me a little bit about what she does, her role in the program, and um, um, her interaction with the clients. How many applications do you receive monthly um, before and after COVID? You know, that's a good question. I don't know if I have an exact number, to be honest, but I will say that there's a difference. Um, mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot more applications come in now um, because of COVID. And it all depends on the program. You know, um, we're a small organization, but we're fortunate enough that we offer many services. And so we've seen a huge growth in our homelessness prevention services right now. Um, we're getting a ton of applications every month for that program versus before we were getting about seven a month. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's, it's um, I think there was one month where we were well over 50 applications. Um, wow, it was a, very high. Yeah. Um, the calls at our shelter are um, have definitely increased. We've taken in extra people like tonight getting ready for this cold. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do. Are we going to um, take in extra people again? Are we going to, um, we're hoping to partner with some other agencies to hopefully get people hotel rooms. So definitely seen an increase um, after COVID for sure. So you're seven, you're saying seven prior to, before the pandemic and about 50 after. Yeah, and I can definitely try to clarify, but we had, we were fortunate enough we got um, some extra funding from the city of Somerville for homelessness prevention specifically. Um, and when the eviction moratorium in Massachusetts lifted, um, a lot of people started getting notices to quit and they had rental arrears because of, you know, losing their job in the pandemic. And um, there was a point in time where we had a wait list of um, over 200 people waiting for us to process their applications to hopefully prevent them from becoming homeless. What are you doing um, for your clients in crisis right now? What are some of the specific um, uh, actions that you're taking? Yeah, so specifically we've one increased staffing which is awesome um we've hired some extra case managers in our rapid response program we've hired um, new housing navigators to really try to um, get people out of homelessness and into housing our street outreach program from the moment that covid started um, to now it hasn't stopped operating you know we never took a day off we never started working from home and we actually increased the number of days that we're going out into the community to help people so our street outreach program we work with the most vulnerable people people that are sleeping unsheltered and we've partnered with different community members um, in somerville and arlington to get hot meals um, food water because water is a is really difficult to find right now with public water fountains being turned off um, to make sure that people sleeping outside had their basic needs met. We've also opened up our adult shelter during the days, um, two days a week. So typically our adult shelter is closed during the day, um, but on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're running it during the day to allow people sleeping outside to come in and shower, do laundry, get a hot meal as well as for our adult shelter clients to hang out and get case management services. Walk us through the process of a client who needs emergency housing and how long it would take, roughly. It can take a while, if yeah. I'm being honest. Um, it, it all depends on how they became homeless or what sort of housing they're looking for. Um, public housing that you think of in a housing authority, it can take maybe a year, two years. Um, we're fortunate that we have housing navigators that are working to kind of maneuver through those systems. So if somebody's looking for housing, they can either work with the case manager at our shelter or the ones down here at our main office. Um, and they send out hundreds of applications just trying to find housing in, in anywhere possible. Great. Uh, this may seem like a silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What's the craziest thing you've seen? 
there's a, a place in Somerville, um, we call it the salt piles, where it's like the salt, the road salt that mm -hmm. gets put down um, in the winter. Mm -hmm. It's um, underneath the highway mm -hmm. of 93, and there are people that sleep there. Mm. Um, and I mean, it's large piles of salt, and so there's probably maybe three feet between the highway and, and the top of the salt piles. And I've seen a lot of rough sleeping conditions, mm. um, but I would say that's probably the worst and, and craziest thing that I've ever seen, to think that mm. We have people here in Somerville mm. sleeping in million dollar homes, um, practically right next to people that are sleeping above or right below the highway that's letting off a lot of chemicals yeah. on top of salt that's letting out a lot of chemicals. Um, and it's a, it's a thing to see, you know. Um, there's a lot of encampments, there's people that sleep on the streets, but there's something about those salt piles that just really, mm -hmm. I think, can affect a person or it makes you think like, wow, how is this still mm -hmm. happening here? Absolutely. Um, until you ne sit next to somebody panhandling and mm -hmm. feel the looks that they get mm -hmm. or feel the like, somebody be like, no, I don't have anything for you. It's it's a feeling when you're sitting there, you realize the way that they are treated is like they're not human. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, hearing you say like, am I doing enough? Honestly, a smile is a lot. A, hey, how are you? Like, are you doing okay? Or I know of a place called the Somerville Homeless Coalition. If you need help, I can call them right now and they'll come talk to you. Or I can bring you there. I can grab you hand warmers, food. Those things are what make the difference for our clients. Those are the things that keep them moving forward so I can keep doing the work, you know, so I can keep showing up every day. And I think that's something that sometimes people forget about. Those small things allow us to keep coming. No one's giving up on anybody, yes. basically. Yeah. Keep the faith. Exactly. Keep the faith and keep the hope alive. One last question to wrap it up. Yeah. If you want, if there's anything you want um, our viewers to know about your clients, what would it be? They are extremely loving um, and caring people that have have troubles um, and they're having a hard time getting out of those troubles. But I think with the amount of love that they show me and my coworkers, like they'll get out of where they're at if you just give them a chance and have a little bit of patience with them. Um, they're very caring, smart dedicated, loving people that have families, that have a future, and if you just have a little bit of patience with them, we will get them help. We just need time to do it. So. Great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. For um, taking the time with me this afternoon. I really yeah. learned a lot and I enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. And my conversation continues at the Somerville Homeless Coalition. I am now here with Felicity Beal, who's Director of Development. And she's going to talk about um, different strategies they have for uh, raising funds for the organization and a little bit about her role and what they do. Um, so the Homeless Coalition is uh, in its name. We're located right here in Davis Square in the basement of, uh, basement of CBS. <laughs> we also have a, a food pantry which is located in East Somerville in, uh, in Broadway. And our vision really is in finding everyone a home. And we understand that whilst everybody deserves to be in a home, mm -hmm. not everybody has equitable access to housing. Mm -hmm. So our mission is really in supporting homeless and near homeless individuals and families um, with support and tailoring that support um, so we can help them gain housing, uh, maintain it, and as well as maintaining it, making sure that it's affordable. What I've come to learn is that every situation is unique mm -hmm. and, and it takes time. Yeah. It takes a huge amount of time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think, um, that's what I think the uniqueness is about SHC, is that we take the time, we invest in our clients, we take the time to nurture, nurture a relationship, uh, to develop that relationship, and then to kind of work out what solution is, is best for them. Um, to give you a great example of this, Erin, um, one of our case managers who is just through the other side of this door, she was working with a client for over a year and she was living, uh, her client was living in, in her car. 
and you know that is that is homelessness somebody who presents like everything's okay and this poor woman was living in her car um, and Erin really had to work hard at breaking down barriers because it was all about trust so what she was doing is she was uh, you know just having that conversation and about housing and, and how we could help, but within that, that relationship was developing and we were hearing about the financial struggles and what exactly she needed, the help that she needed. Uh, one of the things that she needed, for example, was how important it was for her to be housed with her two dogs that also lived in the car with her, because that's part of her mental health, yes. you know, and her, her well-being, she yeah. needed to be. Uh, needed to be there so we actually housed that client in in June kind of right in the, the height of, of, of kind of the craziness of the world and um, back in 2020 and um, she's still stable she's she's good Erin uh, still keep, keeps in touch with her and uh, in fact Erin and I delivered her um, when she moved in I think in July we ended up delivering a brand new bed frame and a mattress donated by the fabulous you know fabulous community of Somerville uh, and supporters that we have um, and you know help set her up with some basic supplies you know the the passion and commitment that the staff have here and and then the benevolence and the uh, abundance of giving in Somerville that's you know that's a beautiful thing right and I really heard that passion come across when uh, I was speaking with Hannah um, your emergency uh, shelter manager yeah. Yeah, really yeah. came across the dedication. Yeah. And that's what's needed, right? And she's been out all morning, kind wow. of in six degrees, you know, wow. handing out hot food today and uh, the chili she talked about. The chili, about. did she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need some of that chili that's too. Perfect but. for a day like this. <laughs> I know, I know. But you know, again, that was donated by Amazing. very, very kind people. Amazing. So it's just as simple as making like a pot of soup or something like that. Bring it to the some of the homeless coalition and there, there are the ways to help. Yeah, there are ways to help, and our website has a ways to help page. Um, so it can involve kind of food and toiletries and uh, things like that. So kind of the physical items that we need to keep a, um, a stocked food pantry, um, but also kind of ways you can help. We Hannah uh, knows of the emerging needs within that kind of street outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, well, street homeless popula population right. so she'll know kind of what the emerging needs are and the current needs are and we just update our, our website. Also through the website people can contact us and uh, and although we don't really accept clothing donations because we have no place to store them right. but sometimes we put a play out for kind of coats or winter boots specifically um, and also people contact us through the website particularly if they move house uh, something like that they say oh I've got these furniture items um, can any of your clients benefit from mm -hmm. from these items? So we do get people uh, asking us, and then I just put it out to uh, to everybody, uh, the, the team, and you mm -hmm. know we can then get those items to individuals who need it. Yeah, yes. I certainly have extension passion and dedication <laughs> in, <laughs> in this field, having come from, obviously, with my crazy accent, having come from... Um, England two years ago, nearly two years ago, yep. with my husband's job. I had my dream job in England because I was working in this type of role um, in a homeless charity in, in England and I actually had, had done five years of uh, voluntary work within that organisation as well with night shelters and, uh, and stuff like that. So um, I have a, a real... Uh, a real desire to be able to help people who are less mm. fortunate mm. Um, and the, the the values of SHC I just feel like I have landed on my feet mm -hmm. finding SHC because mm. that's what it's about. Any other programs that you want to like highlight? Sure well there's there's four main programs really we have food assistance I mean food insecurity is huge and I'm so glad it's higher up on the agenda than it ever was. So although what's happening is not great right now, at least we're starting to get a feel of, 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 of exactly what food insecurity looks like and um, that people are not in hiding anymore because there's nowhere yeah. to go. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a shame that people are using food pantries as their very last resort and what we're looking to do is, is to um, find out more uh, so we don't have to, uh, so that clients don't c 
come to a food pantry because it's their last resort, that they're actually, it's part of a solution for them. So we're looking at ways that we can kind of support with other resources and other providers uh, within Somerville. Um, so we have the food pantry and part of the food pantry uh, we have the uh, community meal that I mm -hmm. mentioned, the Thanksgiving meal, we do yeah. that once a week in containers now unfortunately mm -hmm. but uh, meals are donated usually. We, um, we pay for those meals and some get donated by some, some business, businesses in the area as well so that's great. So that's the food pantry and then mm -hmm. we, as Hannah mentioned, she's kind of emergency shelter yeah. services so we have two shelters. Um, one in East Somerville again, which is a family shelter with up to five families. Um, and then we have an adult shelter just up the road here in Davis Square. Um, and that serves a population of 14 um, individuals, I believe. Um, outreaching on the streets twice a week, yep. um, supporting them, getting them to engage with us. It starts off with food. Yes. Starts off with food. It and, it, and it starts off with those pair of gloves right. and the hand warmers. And then we get to, right. you know, what, what support does this person need? So again, it's that kind of relationship that Hannah and, and the team really uh, mm -hmm. really do so so well with. Um, we also have um, a massively wonderful supportive housing and housing search program um, as well. So as well as supporting people who are homeless, uh, we also support people to maintain their tenancies in right. their homes. So the supportive right. housing is that uh, piece of it is that we have some uh, wonderful case managers who will go and uh, visit people that we've been able to house, their clients, and they remain a client pretty much for as long as that client needs. And whether that's weekly to begin with, and then it goes monthly or goes quarterly, it doesn't matter. You know, we work case by case in, in terms of what that person uh, mm -hmm. person might need. The more you describe it, the more I see it as a family. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a family, and that's what family is there to you know, pick you up during the, the hard times, yeah. you know, the difficult times and support and be there for the good times also, those victories and yeah. success stories. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and something that um, Hannah also mentioned that, that you're mentioning too is, is this theme I'm picking up is the uh, part of your mission, uh, case, case by case. Yeah. No, there's no cookie cutter sort of solution, no, no. such thing. No, because everybody's different. Everybody we're has, all human has a story. Yeah, no, you know, every we all have stories, yeah, right? And everyone's story is different. Um, and also, you know, you 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 secure clients um, if they're homeless, but not necessarily homeless. Could be possibly in on the way, but you're trying to prevent that. Yeah. So another one of our services really is um, eviction prevention. So prevent mm -hmm. prevention of homelessness. Um, which is um, very prevalent now. Um, yes. to, we, we've always had um, we've always had that team, and last year, when I say last year, 2019, we um, helped prevent 71 evictions, mm -hmm. which is perfect. Do you know we were actually prevented mm -hmm. 186 evictions during 2020? That's amazing. It's crazy. It's During crazy the that people, there is enough people yeah. to need that amount of help, but yeah, there is a lot of people, and we get, uh, we do get funds, we do get, uh, we do, do get get grants to be able to support this, but it's never enough. No, it doesn't. But if you're pay, paying somebody's mortgage payment off for for, for the month or two months or ha whatever right. their rent arrears are, or it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a, a a lot of funding is going to that go into that right now. Mm -hmm. We have currently over 400 app open applications needing kind of rental assistance wow. right now. Wow. So have you seen, you've seen the increase after the pandemic? Yes. Presumably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we were dealing with 10 applications for support every month um, and now we're seeing on average 134 oh, applications per month. Yeah, it's hard. Oh, it's difficult. Yeah. It's really difficult. But we're glad that we can be here. Oh, absolutely. People. You guys are making it. Imagine if you guys were not around. Oh, I don't, don't know. My heart breaks. Dread the thought. I know. I know. Dread the thought. I know. It's, it, it's just a matter of, um, you know, people have to want, they have to do the search themselves also to, to find 
the agency. It's yeah. not necessarily going to come to you as well. Yeah. You have to want to be able to go and say, you know what, I might be, I'm in a dire situation or about to be. I don't want my, me and my kids to be out on the street. So a friend, I remember a friend told me about the Summer of a Home, Homeless yeah. Coalition. I'll give them a call. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. Right. It, it is a, you know, it, it's nice when you get referrals. My friend said that I can come down here and get some emergency food. My friend said that there's a food pantry where I can really, you know, pay, don't have to pay for my groceries. So I can, you know, afford to pay my new internet bills because my kids are being homeschooled right now and I didn't have internet at home because I didn't need it. I didn't need it for my job. I didn't need it for my children. That's right. But now I need it for, for my job and I need it for my children. That's right. So I need to pay that, but I still have food bills. My children are still at home. That's right. They're at home more. I have three children. They need feeding a whole lot more <laughs> being at home all this time. Mm -hmm. um, your heating bill is going up. You're in the house all the time. Lights. Oh my goodness, kids never put lights out either. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't, because they're always on that social media. Yeah. Now yeah. more than ever, of course. Yeah. So, Felicity, do you find that you have to be creative when you're like writing grants and factoring in these additional costs for your clients? Yeah, I think um, innovative, I guess, rather than creative. Sure. You know, sure. and making sure that you kind of. Um, know what you want. Are you um, looking to serve kind of bas uh, basic needs and understand about people in crisis? Uh, there's a lot of crisis management, but you know, what are we doing that can add growth to what we're doing, that can change, that can make some kind of systemic change? So we always look further out and uh, look at how we can enhance our skill set and, um, and, and to grow. And, and that growth is just about growing our capability more so we can help people more in this preventative preventative piece. Do you see any concerns of a long-term impact that COVID has had on um, your clients? Well, without a doubt. Well. Without a doubt. Um, this, this level of need mm -hmm. is not going away, it's just rising. It's, no. it's, it's just going up. Um, for example, um, we were on a point in time count. Um, yeah, I don't know if Hannah spoke about it at all, but uh, um, it's a, a national thing you do and you, you count your, your homeless population, your unsheltered population at the dead of night, kind of between midnight and four. Yes, we um, had, we had, you had talked about that actually. Yeah, earlier. okay, yes. yeah. So, yes. so um, we knew that we were going to see more people on the streets mm -hmm. um, because we know that there are less beds available in shelters right now. Mm -hmm. Thankfully not in ours, but there are less beds in shelters because of social distancing rules. Uh -huh. So we're down by hundreds of beds, so we're seeing more of those people on the streets. You know, in 2020, we saw a 67% increase in people using our food pantries. During the pandemic. During the pandemic, but still, because they haven't just gone away, they're just now new clients. So we actually have a thousand new households as a result of the pandemic that we're feeding and supporting. New households? New, 1,000. New, 1,000. Wow. So it's now over 2,000 households that we're supporting. We used to deliver, you know, because people are more vulnerable. Uh, yeah. People can't get out. People have, you know, underlying medical conditions. We used to do um, 18 food deliveries a month where we would go to those clients who were elderly or disabled or had some kind of ailment. We now do 200 food deliveries a month. Wow. And that doesn't go away. That's probably just going to go up. It sounds like it will only yeah. go up. Yeah. Wow. Um, January alone, we've had 736 visits to the food pantry already. Wow. Yeah. I don't know from that how many are new, but I'm sure there's some new people in there. Definitely. And mm -hmm. um, like I was mentioning before, you know, still over 400 families in need of, of kind of eviction prevention uh, right now. And there's just, there's just so much, there's just so much to be done. Right. More volunteers needed? We have volunteers in our food pantry. That's the area that we need help with. You know, again, okay. ways to help. You can volunteer. We can, we can get you in touch with, with Project Soup. What are you doing to um, self-care these days? <laughs> Me? Yes, you oh personally. Oh, my goodness. As you help your clients. 
you know, do the work. How do you, who helps you? Yeah. Or how do you help yourself as you do, as you do the, the vital work you're doing in our community? I, I think sometimes you just need to take a breath. You need yeah. to slow down. I yep. regularly try and say that to myself. Right. Um, I think we have, like you mentioned, family. You know, we, we talk to each other. We support. Communication is key. Yes. Where, yeah. where are you all at? Flexibility yes. is another kind of self-care. So within the management team at SHC, you've got that, that nurturing care for, for staff. So Because you could burn out. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's heavy times, you know. Of course. Of course. Um, and a similar thing with, with, with clients, really. Just, just being there and having that relationship. Uh, is is the most important and, and just allowing people to talk and have an outlet is is pretty much what we're what we're doing right now and my last interview this afternoon is with Sophia Naylor who is the development um, community coordinator at the Somerville Homeless Coalition Hi, hello Sophia. how Hi. are you good how are you good I just had great conversations with your colleagues um, Hannah and Felicity mm -hmm amazing amazing dedication you guys have and the level of passion for what yeah, you do very definitely. commendable yes absolutely yes definitely feel the energy yes we have on a whole january day yes we are not lacking in energy <laughs> <laughs> most of the time <laughs> <laughs> that's great okay let's get right into it um tell me a little bit about the campaign that you launched uh that you're going to be launching in february for the homeless coalition and the reason behind that yeah, so the campaign, we've titled it the Somerville Streets Challenge, and um, it is a campaign to spread awareness and help us raise funds among neighborhoods that are big supporters of SHC already. Um, so we've identified um, a pretty significant number of streets where we will be um, working with advocates on those streets to spread the word and get their neighbors to help us, yeah, just raise awareness for what's going on in the community, which is that we have, you know, over 400 families facing financial crisis right now and on the brink of eviction, if not already in the process of being evicted. So this campaign is to raise funds to go towards benefiting those clients and help them stay in their homes through the winter and hopefully beyond the winter as well. There will be some uh, resources on the website of how you can do that and the street with the m largest number of donors will win up to $500 uh, for a socially distanced block party at the end, well hopefully when it's warmer out. Yeah, not in February. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Wow, a block party. Yes, and the uh, money um, the funds will be in the form of a gift card to a local Somerville restaurant or cafe. So we're keeping it local and trying to, um, yeah, just support Somerville businesses because they are all, a lot of them are strong supporters of SHC as well. Of course. What's the craziest thing you've seen out in the field? It's not even crazy, but just like uh, how in good spirits some people are, despite uh -huh. their their living conditions and despite the fact that they may be experiencing street homelessness, you know, and, and don't have access to a lot of the resources that you and I have access to. And, you know, they're still joking around and we can just talk. And um, I think I it was this first time I did outreach with our outreach team. That was surprising to me and really amazing. That's great. It's, it's funny you said that because that's exactly what I had in mind when I, when I think crazy. Crazy doesn't have to necessarily mean bad. Right, right, right. Yeah. It can mean like cr the crazy generosity of yes. people. Yes. If there's anything you wanted our viewers to know about your clients, what would it be? I would say that the thing I would want everyone to know is just that they're full dynamic people just like you and I and um, the fact that they are homeless or were at one time homeless is only one small part of their identity. And it's, um, you know, they're good people and they're important people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm hearing that Yeah. with every answer. Good yeah. people, important people, caring people. Yes, caring people and they're, you know, worthy of all the things that we're worthy of. Well, they're yeah. so fortunate to have you and your colleagues and the entire Somerville Homo Homeless Coalition team <laughs> yes. by their side. Thank you. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. And um, 
like I said, viewers, keep those donations or, or vol in terms of volunteer, whatever, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a monetary donation. It could be your time. It could be your energy. It could just be, you know, you saw this and you said, you know what, I see someone who might be homeless and I'm just going to give them a, a smile with my eyes because I'm wearing a mask. Yes. Um, and get to know them and you never know what... But that can lead to absolutely uh, make a difference, right? Yes, yes, uh, and just exactly like you said, just smiling and engaging and not just looking right past them can be something too. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sophia, for joining me this yes. afternoon. It was a pleasure, and we really learned a lot. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you.